good, YouTube? It's what to move a lie back with another extra. Today we are back with another informational. It may be graphic. Uh, court day for YNW Melly murder trial expert testimony goes terrible. Don't know what that means. Day three. Uh, the guy we watched does want uh, Melly terminated. I seen it in his energy. He he he. This guy right here, he he hates Melly. But YouTube, this is informational. This is, I don't know the rules. I just know I'm not putting out no content that's hateful. This is just informational. And this is just a, a, a jury case. The murder trial is getting so don't try to the one strike Melly me. The murder trial is getting extremely chaotic. One of the victims, YNW Juvie, his father got interviewed and told the world about a fight that occurred two days before the murders where apparently Sack Taser beat up Melly and punched his girls out in front of Melly's girlfriend two mm. days before they got murdered. The story about the 200,000 with Anthony was a true story because 20K. it's not reported, but Chris told me the same story and also it was a $500,000 play. Damn. And Melly was going to get 200,000, Zach was going to get 200,000, Chris was going to get 100,000. And as, as I'm hearing it from Chris, they was going to sell the YNW brand. Not a record deal or nothing like that. So that's another motive that the dad brings up is that $500,000 was on the line and apparently Melly killed them over $500,000, which I've always questioned. I just I don't know how the brothers slash even close friends can do like, bro. In, I don't know what niggas do to art. I don't know. Has to be a millionaire, like a multi-millionaire, and it was obvious at this point in time. Why would he kill his friends over that much money? For someone that's gonna be worth that money, I don't think he's gonna kill his friends over half a million dollars. Altercations about disputes about money over over certain situations, and they got in a fight prior to that, and they said, you know, the story that they say um, Sack beat him up and knocked his goals out. I mean, it's obvious like Sack would have beat this nigga up if they did fight. Like that's obvious. His girlfriend being in front of him might could have triggered that though. Not gonna cap. Could have made him like, mad. Two days later, I think that's when the incident happened. That's a bombshell statement. He's saying if they got in a fist fight, his girl got knocked out in front of his girlfriend, and then two days later, the murders happened. Like, that's a bold statement. These could be big motives, but it's going to be These are big motives, not going to lie. There's no evidence of them whatsoever. And then today that's in court, facts. some drama happened where I'm going to be reading some tweets from a correspondent that was there live. This guy, Bryson Boone, on Twitter has some interesting tweets I'll read through later on, but right now we're going to watch some oh. of the trial from today. So this guy is a manager of a neighborhood, I believe, that they lived in, I'm guessing. So I believe they're just showing the footage of the red Jeep entering the neighborhood. So that Melly's team can't say that he got in the red Jeep because this Jeep was on camera going to the neighborhood alone at a different time where Melly's phone was in the middle of nowhere where he was being tracked. So this is at 3.50 in the morning. The other set of guys are just going home and the other car that Melly and everyone else was in was like, this is right around the time where Melly allegedly was killing them at 3.50 in the morning because he- Bro just said Melly was killing them, bro, what? I by 4.02 in the morning, 10 minutes later. So you don't know if there were four or five people in, in that car, correct? He, of course, he has no idea how many people were in that car, really. They only checked the driver. This guy works for the Broward County Sheriff's Office. He's basically a f nerd when it comes to guns, to dumb it down. And so we want to be sure that we're doing it. We're doing it with the firearm that was... Because if not, then we're applying so many variables that we can't account for. So he just explained the importance of actually having the firearm. Like I said, I'm just sitting back in and watching. I'm not... I don't know anything these people be talking about. I'm just here to, you know, see what we got to see. So I'm, I'm watching just like y'all. You feel me? Because these are the scene which they don't have. And like I said, bro, it's so funny every time a... Weapon. Uh, um, celebrity dude, every time a celebrity is anything, rather it be not even just a murder, like, oh, this celebrity allegedly beat this per, like, anything, bro, it's never no cameras, but if I go steal from a dollar store, bro, it'll be like a camera on every street, following me, tracking me all the way to my house, probably in my room, like, oh, you can't make it up, but these so niggas the never have anything. From this portion here, um, the chamber of this firearm ends right around here. And so from that portion forward is where the rifling will be present on the barrel of the firearm. So yeah, he's basically explaining that projectile bullets get an imprint from a gun that is specific to that gun. Like no other gun can replicate the imprint. That's why it's so important to find the murder weapon, which they did not find. So these are the areas that typically find the murder weapon um, by another tool inside of the barrel. Usually when we're looking at projectiles, Examiners look at the land pressed areas, not as much as the press areas. Bro's just reading something. He's probably not even really paying attention. A lot of nerdy gun shit, dude. He doesn't look like doesn't look like he's in a good mood, obviously. At some point during this day, something happens where one of the victim's family members makes eye contact with him and like hit their chest or something at him and then like have to leave and then like deputies follow them out and say they need deputies out there. Like some shit happened. Because if you didn't know, Sack Chaser is also suing YNW Melly's like company, like YNW. Like his family is suing. So there's tension with you know all that as well. Like 
like there's a civil lawsuit, I believe, for like millions of dollars as well. Primer residues in particulate lead will travel. The primer residue, the particulate lead. Bro looks so bored. Bro, this nigga hates so Melly. So in this particular case, it's the 40 Smith Lesson Blazer. I would he use hates Melly. He wants Melly done. So I'm not going to use a federal cartridge case. I'm not going to use a warranty cartridge case. Um, he is so over this shit. I wish they weren't hiding their mouths so I could try to lip read. I'm pretty sure he's drawing something, by the way. He's like scribbling down. Sure. So, so far it's been about two hours of this guy analyzing the bullets and the imprints on the bullets and the science behind the bullets. Hey, I respect parts. you for sitting there through that seven hour case for niggas like me to just get their preview. I respect you for that. Even though you want my nigga Melly dead. Powder in the bullet. A lot of boring shit. So once I did the worksheets and I saw that... None of the evidence really could have been precluded from. Hey, this is a murder trial. You know, two two men have been murdered. They expect there to be a lot of information given to them in order to, for them to, to help make their decision. And and, I, and sometimes if you get in there and you put it up right out in front of them real quick, they're they're less attentive at that point. I mean, they they want more. They say, wait. Is that all I got to make my decision? But not being so brief that they missed the point and they're and they're disappointed. But how can he reproduce something if he doesn't have the weapon that shot the cartridges, Judge? Back. Well, certainly, if we were looking for a conviction Big solely on this witness's testimony, um, I, I don't know that the state would Nigga be able dead to dead ass that. Like that. Yeah, that's Look what like I was saying. Like, it's really hard for them to reconstruct this and do this science experiment that this guy said he did without it being the exact weapon. Which type of clock is it? Clock seventeen? Is it clock nineteen? But they sitting here talking about like, I mean, it's it's not like. Bullshit, but bro, like, dude, come on, bro, like, they're not having no, I I haven't seen any, the only thing I see they could trace it to being Melly did it was, uh, I mean, like, niggas not being blood on them, I mean, that, like, I don't know if that happens, niggas not getting, I don't know, I think they did, did he get, like, I don't know if Melly got shot, uh, I don't know why whoever they talking about the driver changing clothes is like, bro, if the nigga changed clothes, that's actually like, bro. I don't know. That's all I got. Like 43 years of the clock. Uh, but nothing else is showing me he did. All the by the same power. That pattern because I can't account for those variables. I don't know what the make and model is of the firearm. Pretty much just explained that his uh, reconstruction was kind of useless because he doesn't have the firearm. His 40 caliber can be in multiple types of guns. I mean, essentially, this witness gave all this technical information and then make sure said, you know what, the FBI I'm requires sure in order to do to give an I opinion good on back this, here you have to have the weapon, going cap, and you have to have the even. I don't even want to sit up. I just want to. Uh, so shit. basically, he's saying, you know, everything I told you, uh, really, the FBI doesn't even account for that because we're not following their guidelines. Honestly, kind of a W for Melly right here. His defense lawyers are going to have a goddamn field day with this guy. And all we've really seen at this point is friends. friends Forensic evidence, pictures, cell, talk of cell phone data, a gun that no one knows what the gun is, you know, who shot the gun. At this point, it's all a big mystery, and we're just waiting for some actual evidence because we're talking about a man's life here, right? The, the death penalty is on the line right now. So when you're talking about a person's life, you want to be sure and you want to have all the evidence that you need in order to make that choice. Melly's lawyer is cross examining right now. The shooting occurred inside a car, for instance. Would the arm length map of the so called shooters, shooter or shooters, it could. And whether or not the person was leaning in one direction? Sure, yeah, very small environment. Okay. So, and if you don't take those variables into consideration, you're just giving a guesstimate, estimate of where everybody was, correct? Lawyer 101, he's making them look like they're guessing. Because there's so many variables that go into this. Consider that to be not proved beyond to the Next Prosecutor said objection here, say. To take all those variables in before you told this jury or any jury Yes, I typically I would want to make sure that I'm accounting for as many variables as possible whenever rendering an opinion. Otherwise, it would be just a guess. Yes. And that's it, right? The next guy's worked with glass for 14 years. Yeah, so we're about to hear about some of the glass on the car, I would imagine, right here. Almost exclusively anything having to do with glass in the laboratory. Now they're about to show a bunch of samples of the glass from each window, I believe. Um, this one is item 7, and this was represented as being from the uh, rear passenger window rear window of the vehicle uh, and again you can see it's dark gray in color what's he the doing when i make the rear passenger windows and the rear window dark gray um, which is a natural tinting that they, so you don't put an aftermarket tint on it it just tints the passenger part of the vehicle while it is possible that another source the positive glass i've seen and it was exactly like the glass in this case um, i find it's somewhat unlikely just based on those factors so he just said he finds it unlikely that it's some other car's glass. So he's not even 100% sure with his science as well. So there's a moment right here where oh. it looks like Melly gets like visibly upset with staring at someone right here. His lawyer like covers up his face with a binder and talks to him. See his hand? I mean, he's like saying something. I really wish we could fucking know, man. I think someone was staring at him in the courtroom because look, he's like looking over there. Nigga wasted a He's lot of years of their life with this bullshit here. Not gonna cap. 
She seems annoyed too as well. Now he's bobbing his head. <laughs> he went straight to the music to distract himself. Crime scene investigator, first down. Six, four, six, yeah. That's got a strange accent, okay. He's a crime scene investigator. This is the hospital where the car was uh, dropped off with the bodies. Tape, the police vehicle. So that's the exterior. Apparently this guy cuts off the prosecutor a lot too, which you can't do in court. It should be though. He does it on accident, obviously, but. Cool. Moving on to the next photograph. The next photograph is the vehicle again. It's like... His accent's strong, dude. It's gonna be really hard to analyze what he's saying. Do you go to hit and runs on the side of the road as a crime scene investigator? I do. I forgot that the hood of the car was damaged, like they hit something. Did you have any idea as to when that damage could have occurred? No idea how the damage occurred. Oh, is this the gunpowder residue test? So look, a positive looks like that, and that's pretty much what this looks like. On oh, uh, Bortland's hands, the driver that uh, showed up with the bodies. Blue specks. Mm. Sure. Yeah, it's a chemical reaction to the nitrogen. Is that a positive identification? I couldn't see any real blue blue for me. No. I couldn't see it. He just said he couldn't see any blue, so I guess he's saying it wasn't positive? It looks pretty positive to me if you're looking at the pictures. Negative is like completely blank. But now Melly's team's gonna come up and cross-examine this guy. This might be interesting here. Well, you've got to remember that you've got the rear windshield top the shaft. Okay. Well, there's no hole in there. <laughs> this nigga don't have a clue what he's talking about. Going into the rear seat. Well, I'm just trying to figure out where the two holes are. One would be the back of the seat and the other would be the front of the seat. Oh, and you have fixed the string on the side of the I like, I don't understand, bro. Like, as soon as this, anything happens, it's just never... Like, you tell... Bro, if I go to the hospital and I do some criminal shit, bro, they will have so much footage of me. It's unreal, bro. These niggas will have a camera everywhere. But now there's just one old top... One top camera. They can we'll see him... Like, come on, bro. Like, y'all... Come on, bro. So there if that's push, the case, get more cameras, bro. It will come out on the other side, the front side of the seat. And I ain't know, I'm just saying for y'all's sake. That has gone through that hole to the hole in front. You're saying that the angle from the rock is deflated by the feet. That angle has no clue. by the angle of the rock that you had already placed through that hole. Okay. Right? I'm, I'm not the expert. You tell me. Is that what happened? No, that's not correct. Well, is that what you did? I don't remember now, but... I Wouldn't you have? Oh, he's lost. He's confusing him. I'm sorry. Pull it. No, no. Concrete. Shut. Pull it. Twist down, up and down. So he said bullets go up and down and they ricocheted and shit. Completely feel bad for, that guy. for this guy. I'm sorry in advance. Like I literally can't. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. Like 80 percent of the time. So so you're up against a difficult task. Let's concede that, right? <laughs> and in performing that task, how if if you didn't dictate the angle that you extended that string backward by the rod that was placed inside, how would you know what angle to extend backward? Don't know. Is this nigga straight? Like, bro, you good? And if I were Gary Coleman, remember different strokes? He ain't even trying to be involved in this. He just like, bro, I'm just a cop. He's comparing Shaq and Gary Coleman. It would create the same angle as it would if I were Shaquille O'Neal back here. No, that's a very interesting thing. But you have to remember, people shoot. It is normal people expect people to shoot high level, right? But who knows what you're going to shoot? You can shoot down here. You can shoot like this. So I'm never, weak, man. You know, you're very. They could be firing at one angle, could be firing at another angle, at any variety of angle. So, in order to determine the approximate height, which was what you were attempting to do, I mean, it's approximate. Approximate. Okay, I can tell that, but you're not. So, with all those old variables, which one did you know? I did not know. You know it. So would you agree with me that when you have three variables that, at a minimum, there are probably more that we have to consider, three variables that affect your analysis, you would agree with me that your exercise was essentially a few of them? The, well, you have a good point. Could you make an answer? That would even create more possible inaccuracies, right? I don't understand. They're kind of just guessing, and it's kind of a guessing game, you know? Like, trying to make it look not reliable. Why is he going at the cop like this? Like, is he on, is this cop on Melly's side or something? Or on the, is this cop going against Melly, the reason why he pressing it so deep? Like, he just did his, he just trying to do his job. He don't remember no shit from nine years ago. He's fishing for him to say it's going to be inaccurate testing if you don't know all the variables. And he keeps saying, anything's possible. And you know that a lab test showed positive. Uh, oh, wait, so that's what happened. He thought it was negative, but the lab test said positive. All right, so this is the moment where Melly sees someone in the courtroom 
that I believe is a family member of one of the victims and he comes in and he pounds his chest because someone that was in the room tweeted about this. I'll show you the tweet here too. So he seems really animated about something like some shit's going on. Bro, why is the woman look like a fucking demon or something? I think I read his lips saying he said, what did he say? And he said, I don't know. I don't know. What's he doing with this pen, bro? Trying to give someone their pen back? So this guy's tweets are interesting. He says, Melly recites a prayer that lasts until the jury enters the room or is it a chant? Why W. Juvie's mother sits in the front row of the gallery with her eyes glued to Melly across the courtroom. She has been attempting to force him to look her in the eyes frequently. Melly rolls his eyes and turns his head to the witness upon the sight of Juvie's grandmother and other siblings entering the courtroom. Melly's mother, Jamie, said yesterday was a lot better. Yesterday was good. Female legal counsel visibly have a very comfortable connection. She's very hands-on with Melly. It's visibly un undeniable. Melly shakes his head in annoyance at the sight of the victim's gallery as it is filled with a lot of the younger family members of Juvie and Sack Chaser. Children in the victim's Bro, gallery you notice this? him yawning and begin to troll him with sleepy hand gestures. I wish all oh, this was on camera, bro. Jamie King confused by the examination of gunpowder trajectory. Bro, this dude is it a was very confusing. Top is tier trying to stay rat, awake. bro. Like, Melly get out of Twitter, tweet. Like, what is up with you, bro? Why members in the blinked for twice. YNW uh, looked up. Like, dude, what are you on, In the courtroom, fam? five females between the ages 10 and 12. Melly has turned over a piece of paper and began writing or doodling as his hand moves carefree. Doc Chaser's mother is tearing up and exits the courtroom. Melly and female legal counsel are holding an open conversation filled with smiles and flirtatious banter. Doc Chaser's mom appears stressed and restless but calm right now. Melly appears to can't stand Juvie's grandmother, who just entered the courtroom. Disgruntled facial expression as she takes her seat. Doc Chaser's family is currently in the middle of a civil lawsuit outside of Melly's double murder trial with several members of the YNW LLC who is suing for millions. Oh, this one's crazy right here. Melly's mom is unbothered, unconcerned, and unresponsive to the constant obvious looks at her by Juvie's grandmother from across the courtroom. It's honestly really sad because these families lost their children. Like it's it's devastating for sure. Juror number 12 dozed yeah, off. We'll stop One of the jurors it. fell asleep quickly popped her head back up and canvassed the room to see if anyone noticed. Juvie's grandmother is falling asleep. Bro, this Whitney. dude is a... Bro, Bryson dude. Witness and laboratory specialists found no difference from the Jeep's glass and it had to come from the same vehicle. Both Juvie and Sack Teaser's mothers have dozed off. The juror who dozed off is juror number 15, not 12. Michael That's Kelly, rad. the crime scene supervisor, has the gallery laughing with his accent and constantly cutting off the prosecution. Sack Teaser's mother puts on her sunglasses to cover her tears while looking at the photos of the Jeep. Exterior riddled with bullets, taking deep sighs. Actually imagine a mother's position in this. Like it's so devastating, I can't even imagine. Melly briefly looks at the photos of the shot up Jeep, mostly masked his face with his hand and looks down at the table. Now a sheriff exits the courtroom telling another sheriff, we need someone outside. The two sheriffs exit the courtroom enters the courtroom to gesture another male family member to exit, then looks across the courtroom. And the funny Mel thing is like 80, not 10 years after whatever happens, whether he gets sentenced or gets free. If he gets sentenced 10 years later, I promise they're going to have a whole fucking, a whole footage of it. I promise y'all, bro. I promise y'all. They always do it every time. His fist and nods his head. When shit's Both way over. Like, uh, XXX -X Tentation. Oh, footage of the, like y'all always got footage a hundred thousand years after. And the sheriff immediately followed to speak with the men exiting. Melly made no gesture towards exiting individuals. So lots going on on the spectator side of the courtroom. A lot of scientific shit today. Very boring. That's why people fell asleep. Even Shh. family members. Yeah, I almost members fell, asleep, fell man. asleep. I'm just trying to get to the end of this, bro. Honestly, I just want to know what happened. Honest truth. I wish I could literally just see a video of what happened. Honest truth. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, I just want to see. I wouldn't tell nobody. But. Free Melly till he's free. If he didn't do it, I don't know. I have no clue. Uh, it's not really pointing at anything that he did it. But then again, it's not pointing anything he did. But if y'all like the video, like, comment, subscribe, check everything down below. Till next time, we out. Peace.